aqua friends welcome to my channel today we're going to do this very beautiful fall leaves it's kind of my ode to fall goodbye fall i will miss you but i know you'll be back next year so in this tutorial i started with the leaves first and i am just getting the leaf really good and wet with some water and I'm laying down my lightest color. I'm using some yellow ochre. And I am coming in with some alizarin crimson. And as I'm painting that, and it's mingling with the yellow because everything is wet, working wet on wet here. It's making a really pretty orange color. So once you get your first layer on, you let it dry. And in this second layer, I am gonna be adding more detail. So I'm just kind of dividing that leaf in half down that main stem and just wetting that one side first. And I'm coming in with some iso yellow it's a very vibrant beautiful yellowy orange kind of school bus color and again coming in with that alizarin permanent alizarin crimson and getting in those dark and really vibrant red areas So for the darkest areas, I mixed in some neutral tint to get the red really, really burgundy. In the areas, I'm adding, actually adding in some scarlet red too to really pick up on the dark red areas. Adding in the vines gently while it's still wet. And all those little dots and imperfections. So now I'm, I'm wetting the other side and I am going up as close as I can to that middle vine um, because when I start adding paint, I don't want to make a bloom with the other side drying. So using the same colors, I started off with my ISO Yellow Deep and putting in my reds and adding in all those little imperfections on the other side as well. My vines. And now I'm using the darkest of the reds, the burgundy color to I get the tips and all the other little areas. And so once that's dry, I'm re-wetting the whole leaf. And I am just adding some vibrancy, some more of the red around the tips where the leaf is really, really saturated with color. And 
redoing my dark areas. So now I'm taking a script liner brush and while it's wet, I am just using water to make almost like a controlled bloom, a, a light line area where the vines are gonna go, just to soften those vine areas. So that's what that looks like, that's a done leaf. And then I am going to move on to the yellow leaf once that's dry and working in the same manner, wetting the whole leaf area first. Some clean water. And I take my time when you're wetting it. You wanna make sure that it's good and wet so it does not dry before you have a chance to put your colors down. So coming in with the same yellow ochre. Also using some Quinn Gold and it has a really nice vibrancy, a really nice glow to it. So for the slight orange areas I am using a little bit of transparent pyrrole orange to put in those leaf air, those vines and little imperfections on that yellow leaf. doing the stems with some iso yellow and some red. So what I did was I put a mask over the painted leaves, although there's so many points to the leaf, I had a hard time matching it up. And as you can see, it's wrinkled. <laughs> so I decided after just doing one background wash that that wasn't gonna work out. And I took the mask off. Just because there was some areas um, where the mask was over onto the white part of the paper. And when I took that off, I realized that I was gonna have to go over around um, all these points of the leaves by hand and, and do it very, very carefully. So I'm using a fluffy dry makeup brush just to get a really nice smooth background. Once that's dry, I am going over and you can see what I meant by those white areas around the leaf. So I'm having to go in there with a concentrated color, background color that I'm using, which is per, uh, Perusian Blue mixed with neutral tint and I'm getting right up to those white spots and going around the whole leaf like that.
So as you can see, my paper's drying on that left-hand side, and I don't want any hard edges on the background. And so I'm always going over those areas that I'm painting and making sure that they stay moist. So once those fine details around the leaf is done, I'm going back over the whole thing, wetting everything so that I get a more smoother background. And I also needed it to be darker because these two leaves are lying in a puddle and you do see the reflections of um, the, leaf, the, the leaves themselves as well as some uh, of the tree some foliage. It's a really pretty reference photo I got from Pixabay. Once we let that dry, I am going over around the leaf to put in my shadows. So now with a very watery mixture, I am putting in the foliage that I see in the reference photo. So just very loose meandering lines. So the trick here is to get your color very, very watery so that it's just a little bit darker than the background. Now I'm starting to work on those shadows. The shadows I am using more of a half and half consistency because I'm going to get those nice and dark. So the shadows are done wet on dry. You want really nice crisp edges. I'm 
this is the part that really helps bring the whole painting together and, and kind of make sense <laughs> is getting those shadows underneath the leaf. I think it's a cool look. Plus adding those dark shadows really makes the leaves pop in the saturation. Now, as you paint, you always have to look at your painting and as you're adding more paint, you're changing values. And so adding that background, I realized that I am going to need to darken up that yellow leaf. I'm using a watercolor pencil here just to define and get those crisp edges around the leaf. So where some of the paint bled on the stems, I am just lifting that so I could get those yellow tips back on my stems. With a watercolor pencil matching the colors, I am just going around the tips of those leaves, making sure that it looks nice and crisp. Putting in my quinacridum red on the stems. And just giving it a little bit more of a pop of vibrancy now that the background is done I realized that I just needed a little bit more saturation there same with my yellow leaf that's the one that looks pr pretty anemic and really needed another coat there Doing some final touch-ups, adding some more of the red on the leaves, and this is the final product. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial today, and thank you for watching.